deserts are a notable crop experience in the downtown area of Phoenix, as well as in many other urban cities. Urban sprawl happens when cities spread out due to the lack of city planning and population increase. City planning doesn't account for rapid population increase, therefore a lack of planning can cause the population to become more dense in specific areas more so than in others. Urban sprawl and food deserts are negatively affecting our population by creating a lack of access to fresh, nutritious food and public services. Urban sprawl and food deserts go hand in hand because they are directly correlated with city planning, business placement, and population density. Food deserts are a problem because of their negative impact on human health. People living in food deserts are often more prone to cardiovascular disease, obesity, and atherosclerosis. Food deserts are a first world problem because of how the way cities have been planned out. Also, food deserts do not exist in areas where there is no food, and that takes out developing countries with a lack of food. Many spread out cities face these problems. Industrialized nations were more focused on economic build and building growth that they didn't properly set zones for commercial businesses such as grocery stores. Instead, gas stations are more prevalent in low-income areas. To help fix this problem, local organizations have begun to offer food delivery services and are giving out information to people on how to live healthier. The City of Phoenix has a goal that by 2050 there will be a farmer's market in each of the 15 urban village districts. The actions the city is taking are currently unknown. The City of Phoenix also wants to increase the amount of public transportation in the city and as a positive consequence, more people may shop at the grocery stores. Local businesses, such as Grow House, offer land to grow produce for a small fee. Community gardens such as Grow House are beginning to pop up in downtown Phoenix. Urban sprawl is when cities grow exponentially outward without much control. This can be a problem for cities because population density is lowered and people have to commute more, causing more pollution and more time spent commuting. Urban sprawl is a problem because of how people who do not own a car cannot always access public services and stores. They are often forced to walk while carrying their broad items. The environment is also affected because the amount of land is being developed and not used for farm or wildlife. Urban Sprawl has created a car-based lifestyle, where people are incredibly dependent on their cars to complete their daily lives. Urban Sprawl relates the food deserts to the fact that grocery stores and the population that live in them change dependent on population density. Often people who cannot travel to grocery stores will resort to more easily accessible and unhealthy food. To understand why humans choose to make unhealthy decisions relating to food, we need to first understand how the reward system in the brain works. The reward system is a system that causes you to want the feeling of pleasure that you previously experienced. The reward system detects dopamine release, a chemical that makes you feel good. Dopamine is released naturally when you do things like eating food, having sex, and doing exercise. Human nature makes us crave unhealthy foods due to the dopamine release when you eat these foods and how that dopamine affects the reward system. What we'll see next is how we normally experience pleasure. The sending neuron contains dopamine, the brain's pleasure chemical. When something good happens to us, this feel-good chemical is released into the synapse where it connects with receptors. There, dopamine activates the receiving neuron, which in turn conveys the message onto the next neuron, creating a chain reaction that produces pleasure. After the message is sent, dopamine is recycled by transporters to be reused. This conversation repeats itself again and again, and gives us the feeling of pleasure and reward. Unprocessed food, such as fruits and vegetables, release normal amounts of dopamine, so you continue to eat and feel good about eating. Processed food, on the other hand, releases large, unnatural amounts of dopamine into the brain, causing your brain to make you feel really good. Your brain craves the unnatural feeling again, so you probably want to eat more junk food. Over time, your brain can develop a tolerance to dopamine, making you want to eat more junk food to try and get that same feeling again. And action. My name's Kayla Hamilton, and I work at the Uptown Farmer's Market on Saturday mornings, selling honey for absolutely delightful 
fast food restaurants are really bad because they use a whole bunch of pre preservatives. But at the farmer's market, you don't see any preservatives at all. They are local businesses who are just like not really established and they don't make a lot of money, but they come to the farmer's market because it's a really good environment and everything there is local. All the food sellers are organic and they're private. When I walk around the farmer's market, I always see a lot of like really cool people who are like doing what they love and like they, most of them make the product themselves. And so organic food is really good for you because it doesn't have pesticides and it, it doesn't, you know, it, it's, it's not, it's just grown out of the ground without any additives or processing. Hey, I'm Kenny Barrett. I am the, one of the founders for the Grow House Community Garden in the heart of the Roosevelt Row Arts District. At Grow House, we are a standard residential sized property. We have a small bungalow on it and we are able to grow about 250 pounds or more of produce each season just on this one normal sized parcel. So if you think about that, we um, produce enough food here each season for not just one, not just two, but like maybe four or five families or more. What we do is all the food we harvest, we'll let our volunteers take it home. So really like hundreds of people that volunteer at the grow house throughout the year are able to take our produce home. But then we also probably donate between 75 and 90% of the produce uh, to a center called UMOM, which is a center for homeless families. They provide services and help families that have been afflicted by homelessness to get them back on their feet. New Mom is in um, definitely a food desert. They're located in between like Tempe and South Phoenix and the airport, and that area just really doesn't have a lot of access to food. Feeding many families and people through that mode. Community gardens and urban farms can really help alleviate food, food deserts. If we didn't donate the produce, we could probably like feed everybody on our block, for example, just on this one parcel. So, you can see how even just a small project or what you might think is a small project like Grow House can really feed a lot of people. And if every single neighborhood had a Grow House, everyone would be growing their own food. And we wouldn't be needing to ship food from hundreds and hundreds of miles away. We could be growing it right in our backyard.